Hello everyone and welcome. In the previous tutorial we built this lovely little Mark II space shuttle capable of deploying small payloads in low carbon orbit. And in this episode we're going to take on the often tricky task of getting something like this into orbit. And although emulating NASA's real-world space shuttle is a fun challenge to take on, for the purposes of this tutorial, we're going to get the same job done with what I think is a much simpler strategy. So, let's get started. We've got this thing all packed away. Let's retract the landing gear too, because that's the state at which it's going to be flying upwards. And let's switch our editors to the VAB. Now I want this thing to be pointed upwards now, now that we are in the VAB. And by the way, this orientation with the dorsal or top part of the cockpit pointing this way, and it's always the same whether it's a cockpit or a capsule or even a probe body, this is the default orientation in the VAB. And by the way, this direction towards the right here would be towards the south once you're on to the launch pad. And for symmetrical rockets, that's perfectly fine to fly up that way. And be honest, for this thing, you could probably fly it up that way. But I don't know. I kind of think that looks dorky. So I'm going to rotate it so it's this way, with the dorsal part of the cockpit pointing towards the east once we are on the launch pad. That way, when I start pitching towards the east, the actual shuttle part will be flying upside down. And that's the orientation that the real space shuttle use, so I kind of do that. If you don't like that, by the way, you can, if you want to fly right side up, no problem. Just go this way around and it'll fly up right side up. It really doesn't matter too much for what we're about to do, but I kind of like the look of it going up upside down, so that is what we're going to do. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to add on some boosters. And there's two challenges that a shuttle like this is going to present more than what you get in a standard rocket. Number one is all of the lifting surfaces that this shuttle has are all going to be drag and they're going to tend to bring the center of drag forward. And remember with rockets you want the center of drag well back where the center of mass of the rocket will be. So that's going to be one challenge that we might run into. The other challenge that you're likely to run into, especially if you want to build a shuttle that mimics the actual real life space shuttle is asymmetrical thrust. If you want to put a great big fuel tank on the outside of this with two radial SRBs on that, you're going to find that your thrust is going to tend to be way out of whack of where your center of mass is going to be because everything is asymmetric. There are ways of dealing with that, primarily of which is to use a much more powerful engine than the little terrier that I have down here on the bottom. But more powerful engines means more weight that you got to carry up into orbit, which means you need to build something bigger than you otherwise would have. If you want to go that way, that's great. And in fact, that is exactly the direction I'm going to go when we do the Mark III space shuttle video in a future episode. But for this one, we're going to go simpler. There's nothing wrong with simple. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put on four symmetrical radial boosters on this space shuttle and we're just going to surround it. So I'm going to grab me this decoupler, the TT-70 radial decoupler, and I want to make sure that I am on mirror symmetry because I'm just going to put two of them on this side, Let's put the snap on, and then two of them on the other side like that. And you might be wondering, why don't you just, you know, grab one of these, put it on the symmetric symmetry and just do four like that. And that way they're all around there. You'll see why actually radial symmetry gives you a little bit more. It has to do with the fact that this thing's already radial and already asymmetric. So you're better off with a pair of radially symmetric ones like this and like this. Uh, let's actually move this one just a little bit further outwards than you are with four-way symmetry and you'll see why in just a little bit. Okay, to these I'm going to add on the FL-T800 fuel tank. These are 1.25 meter fuel tanks and then on top of that we're going to put on two more of them and then we're going to do the same thing on the other side. 
I do want to make sure that this is looking pretty symmetric. So we're going to use the move tool. We're going to slide these ones upwards like that. You might be noticing they're going up on an angle. That's because what we're attached to is on an angle. We'll deal with that in just a little bit. For our lifters, we're going to put in for our engines the LV-T45 swivel engine. Very, very familiar engine, I'm sure, to most people. And then on top of that, we're going to put on these slanty nose cones because I like the slanty okay uh, let's see that hold the alt key there they go can I rotate these yeah sort of <laughs> we'll do two more of them over here I'll uh, we'll do a little bit of rotation here so they actually are pointing towards the shuttle I think that looks better and as far as the boosters go of course we don't want them going up on an angle like that so we're just going to fix that by selecting the decoupler as our root here and we're just going to again making sure the snap is off we're going to rotate these just ever so slightly inwards just to make sure that looks pretty darn vertical to me yep and then we'll do the same thing obviously with these other ones there I think that's looking pretty good okay so I mentioned that the drag of all of these lifting surfaces are going to be a problem, so let's start investigating that. So we're going to grab, put on our center of mass, we're going to put on our center of lift, and we can see our center of lift is above the center of mass. I don't want that, I want the center of lift below the center of mass. So we'll get started by grabbing some of these AV-RA winglets, and we're going to stick on two, oh, I'm noticing they're upside down, there we go. Uh, let's put the snap on two of them as low down as I can yeah that looks all right and then two of them on this one there we go that looks all right okay and you can see it's got brought the lift down but not nearly enough so we're gonna have to do a little bit of shifting around so I'm gonna grab the move tool I'm gonna grab this booster we're gonna see what happens if I start translating that downwards and you can see that it's the mass that's moving more than the center of drag because while well, there's a lot of mass associated with these boosters there's a ton of fuel and the big engines at the bottom so actually what I want to do is I want to move them upwards and you can see that's bringing the mass upwards that's looking oh, that's looking I think pretty good right about there of course we're gonna do the same thing with these other ones okay so that dealt with the center of lift and mass issue now we need to think about thrust so let's take off the center of lift overlay put on the center of thrust overlay and because I have these four engines all on here pretty symmetrically you can see the center of thrust looks like it's lined up pretty good with the center of mass but you really want to make sure you get a good look and the best place to look is actually right from the top get yourself right on top of your vessel and from my perspective it is looking like the center of thrust is a little bit too far to the left of your screen a little too far that way we might as well get this as good as we can get this and what I'm gonna do and this is why I put these on radially is I want to adjust just two of these without adjusting the other two and I'm gonna adjust these two right here so I'm gonna use the rotate tool I'm gonna to grab the decoupler make sure the snap is off and we're gonna just rotate these this way and notice how it's affecting the mass more than it's affecting the thrust so I actually probably want to go more this way okay so that's getting it closer I can also I think I'm gonna also do these ones I think I need to rotate them this way yeah. these ones again there that's looking pretty good and by the way you don't have to be super duper precise with this but the more precise you can be the better remember we did put a big set of reaction wheels in this thing so that should certainly help but that I think is gonna work for us even though it doesn't look like it's in the center but the important thing is lining up with the center of mass not so much having it right in the middle of where that engine is okay now this thing is going to be a wobbly wonky mess right now because the decouplers are way down here we're going to stiffen this up with a pair of struts so you're going to be two pairs of struts 
There we go, that should stiffen things up a little bit. The other thing that's going to happen is when we get ready to decouple these, uh, to stage them, the force of the decouplers are going to be way down here at the bottom. That's going to tend to kick the back end out, which will make the front end come towards our rocket. We don't want to do that. So to deal with that piece of it, we're just going to grab some separatrons. Where are they? There they are down here. What they're doing is you want to balance off the ejection force from these decouplers down here. We'll test this, obviously. And then what we're going to do is we're going to grab the rotate tool. We're going to rotate these so that they're pretty much pointing straight outwards. And then we're going to translate them inwards. And again, their job is just really to balance off the force of those decouplers down below. I'm just looking, I think I need to come more this way. I want it to be right above where those decouplers are. Like that, that's looking okay. And we're going to keep the thrust right up, but we're gonna take the fuel and take out almost all of it, because all we care about is just getting a little bit of a push, and then they'll be sent off. And of course, we're gonna do the same thing to the other side. He's balanced, yep, same on both. Okay, so this is starting to look like something that likely is going to fly. Let's get into action groups. I'm gonna put the doors here on an action group, action group number one. And also, let's open these up. I want to toggle these lights with the doors. So toggle the light and toggle the light. So when the doors open, these interior lights come on. And when the doors close, the interior lights come off, just like a refrigerator. But what that means is, is on the light action group, I don't want these spotlights coming on at all. So we're gonna turn, so we're gonna take those out and take those out. There we go, like that. And finally, well, let's get into thrust to weights and all of that kind of stuff. Delta V, we are fine. We have a total of 4,082 meters per second of Delta V. That is plenty to get into orbit and to get ourselves back down. Um, This doesn't need to be here. Uh, thrust to weight, let's put this on sea level. Thrust to weight is 0.34. If anything, that's a little bit high. I don't know if I'll be able to tweak it down though, because remember, I got to tweak all of these at the same time. What if I put this at 99.5? To be honest, I think it's probably fine. 99.5. That's 0.3. Okay, there we go. Barely had to tweak those at all. Turn those off. Great. 1.33 thrust to weight ratio. This thing is ready to go. As far as getting this thing to orbit, it's the same as flying up any other rocket. And although I've done this lots of times before in this series, why don't we just do a quick recap of what I like to do to get myself up in to orbit. First, at about a speed of about 50 meters per second, I knock it over about 5 degrees to the east. And then I lock it onto the prograde vector, and for most of this flight, that's what it's locked onto. I only come off of the prograde vector now and again to make slight adjustments to my attitude with the goal of hitting a pitch of 45 degrees at an altitude of around 10 kilometers. While I'm doing this, I'm also watching my time to apoapsis, and once that time to apoapsis gets to about 45 seconds, I start reducing my throttle with the goal of keeping that time to apoapsis between 45 and 60 seconds. Other than that, it's just keeping it locked to prograde and riding up until my apoapsis hits its target, in this case of 80 kilometers. I think most of the time when people get into trouble with flying rockets, what they're probably doing is putting in too many inputs. When I say I keep this almost all the time just locked to prograde, that's exactly what I'm doing. I am not adjusting my attitude 90% of the time at all. Now once I do the staging here, I do have to pay some attention to thrust because that Terrier engine has a lot less thrust than the four swivel engines do, so I'm going to have to increase my thrust to keep my time to apoapsis from falling down. 
but then I just keep watching that time to apoapsis. That is until my target apoapsis gets close to about 80 kilometers, at which point I just stop paying attention to the time to apoapsis entirely. And once I hit 80 kilometers, I cut off my main engines and then time warp until I'm just a few seconds ahead of my apoapsis, at which point I just increase my throttle just a little bit watching my periapsis until it gets around 80 kilometers as well and there we go we are in an orbit and while we watch jeb and bill deploy our payload i want to welcome aboard my newest patron james thank you very much james for your support and if you would also like to become a patron and support this channel there is a link down there in the description but now with our payload deployed, it is time for this to glide back through the atmosphere and land down on the runway at the KSC. And that is what we're going to be talking about in detail in the next video. I hope to see you then.